hi everyone, uh, we're here. Today I'm going to be talking about my finish in the Popper Camps with, uh, Rainbow Fam's Heart Clan Ironworks and Popper, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is the list I was playing. So I'm going to name a quick recap of how I did. Uh, if you don't, if you don't want to hear that, you can skip to the gameplay. Um, but I'm going to be talking about how I did in the tournament. I'm going to be talking about, uh, what I expected, how accurate my predictions were. And I'm also going to be talking about how I feel about the proper meta in moving forward. And then a couple other things that we'll throw in, in there. But, uh, so in terms of how I did, spoilers alert, I got set in place, which I'm, I'm very happy with. Uh, set in place, I think, is a very respectable finish. Sure, you know, it wasn't first, but uh, my loss in the finals was mostly due to variance. It wasn't really uh, in my control. And... I'm completely okay with that. I think that if you're not able to accept that in magic, a variance will go against you sometimes, uh, it's probably not the aim for you. Uh, there were a number of things that I got fairly lucky at, and I'll talk about that uh, in the actual gameplay there. Like, one of the things that uh, was favorable for me was the fact that uh, I was 4-2 after the last round. There were six rounds of this tournament, and I was 4-2. If you were 5-1 or better, you were locked for top 8, but if you were 4-2, your top 8 was not a guarantee, and I got into 8th place, so I made top 8 on breakers. Now, you have to recognize that that was not in my control. I don't really have a say on how good my breakers are. I just got fairly lucky in that my breakers were good enough that I was able to make top 8, and then I was able to take it all the way to the finals. So... You know, I got fairly lucky in that regard, and I, I wouldn't re really change a thing. Uh, in terms of the things like control, you know, preparations, picking an archetype, uh, I think I did fairly well. This deck is well suited against Tron. Uh, I played against three Tron nets, I beat all of them. Uh, I played against a couple, you know, fair nets, a couple linear nets, I was able to beat that. Um, the net felt fairly reasonable, so. You know, and, and, and everything that I had control over, I would say I did a fairly good job at. And uh, when it came to the gameplay, I, I would say I played very, very well. I don't believe I made any huge mistakes, there weren't any regrets that I made, uh, or any regrets that I have in terms of gameplay, you know, and plays that I made. Um, I just came up a little short, but uh, I think one of the biggest skills you can have in, in Magic is being able to be, uh, or rather, not being results oriented. If you are results oriented, you're never going to be happy in magic. But if you focus on the process and uh, you make sure that you do that correctly, the results will eventually come. And in my case, uh, the process was definitely there. I prepared quite well. I looked at what other people would play. I would say my meta game predictions were fairly reasonable. Um, I believe I had like about a 60 or 70% accuracy on, on predictions overall, which is not terrible. Um, there were some players like that wrong, but then there were other players like that reasonably right. Uh, and then others, you know, it was just 100% accurate. But uh, my predictions were fairly reasonable, and against a number of players that I ran into, I kind of knew what they were on. And I'll talk about that in the gameplay. Uh, speaking of the gameplay real quick, uh, I'm going to uh, be completely honest, the gameplay is not going to be uh, through Magic Online replays, uh, and I'll tell you why. So right after the tournament finished, um, it finished on a Sunday evening, uh, I just went through all the replays and I recorded them through OBS, no commentary, just recording them, and then I left it at that. The reason why I did it immediately after the fact is because for some reason, I don't know why, but on Magic Online, if you let a replay just sort of sit there in Magic Online, and then you try and access it a week later, the likelihood that it will have broken and not function is extremely high. I don't know why this occurs, but if you just leave them, they slowly rot away, they rot away like slowly, and then they just never work. And they break at you randomly, and it's rather frustrating. So, I try to record them immediately afterwards, though some of them are still kind of laggy, and unfortunately some of them did break. Um, there's, once again, that's not really in my control. I, I wish it was, but 
that his online replays are not the most reliable thing in the world, um, because they will break on you, and I tried to capture them immediately after, so then that way later in the week when I had time, I could, uh, commentate over them and talk about them. So it's not going to be the best setup, I apologize, but match online replays never really are. Uh, just, it is what it is, it's unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. The match online replay system is, uh, very poorly, uh, built, and, uh, it, it leaves a, a decent quality. Uh, I also want to clarify, the reason why I did not do it live was because, one, this is a high stakes tournament, I don't want to have to, you know, record and play live and talk about it. That's, I think, kind of difficult, but also, Match Online, once again, just doesn't work very well with OBS, and in a net like this, where you have to constantly click through the motions, uh, a little bit of lag like that could cause you to miss it, or, you know, maybe even time out. It's really just not worth the risk, so that's why I didn't really do it live. I'd rather just, you know, have Match Online work as, as intended, uh, listen to music, relax, and just have it in time, so, hopefully you guys can understand. So, that's really about it, uh, I will be talking about the, uh, the gameplay, and, uh, you know, the matches moving forward. Uh, overall though, I, I think this net was very well, well built, uh, maybe moving forward I would hunt Gorilla Shaman for curfew, because I think Bottles is going to become more popular in the meta game. um, and, uh, yeah, that's that. I'll see you in the gameplay, and then afterwards I'll kind of have a wrap-up, kind of including this, talking about where I am in Magic, as well as how I feel about the proper meta game, uh, as a whole. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's hop into the first match. Alright, so we're back for the first match. Um, this was match one in the camps, and I was against the of Storm. Uh, by the way, I just want to clarify, this is not the best setup, I apologize, um, I mostly just recorded the, uh, you know, the, the, the play, the, uh, match online replay, so as it went, but you can see it was a little quickly, so it's nice to be able to back it up, that is not something match online is even capable of. So, basically, this was the opening hand that I was given, um, it has two familiars, two impulsives, uh, Ash Barons, Rehenna, and Flicker. Not really a heap, you can't really play any spells, so it's a fairly easy mulligan. Um, this hand is, I think, a heap, because I have access to Utopia's Roll Abundant Growth, so I, I have my first two lands. You know, what I can do is I can, you know, grab a Bombing Wilds in a forest, next turn, tap the forest, play Utopia's Roll. If I know a second land the following turn, I can do some pretty crazy things, and I'll be in, some, in, in pretty good shape. Um, I also have a Sunset Familiar to start the mana ramp. Uh, the hand basically has, has everything you want. It has a little bit of ramp, a little bit of hard draw, a combo piece. It's, it's great. Now, here's the thing. This is sort of when meta aiming comes into play. Specifically, figuring, well, it's not meta aiming, but preparing, right? Thinking about what your opponent is likely to be playing. Uh, I put Shanna Stone on Boris Bully because they have a lot of good results with it in high level events. And the only other net I've seen them play is Blue Red Flicker, but I don't think that's very good in a uh, event where Tron is particularly popular. Um, however, there was one Blue Red Flicker net that made top eight, but I digress. I put them on Boris Bully and I put a mullet in as if they were on Boris Bully. Uh, you can kind of see that little edges like that do make a difference, because at a tournament like this, where all the players who are in it are playing so well, it's difficult to get an edge in terms of playing better than them, more so if you can get edges and having them not know what you're doing, or make mistakes because of that, uh, you know, or you know what they're on and they don't know what you're on, stuff like that is, is a pretty big deal. So, here, I put back the moment speed because it's not necessary in Boros, and I find that I'm signing that hard out quite a bit. So I'm on the play, I'm just on a lead off with an Evolving Wild pass, and sure enough, they're on Boros. So I grab a Forest Raw as another Utopia Raw, but that's fine, I basically have a third land drop, so uh, that's going pretty swell for me. They play some looting, so they're, they're doing their thing. Uh, not really a ton to say here. Uh, I'm going to play an Abundant Growth. The reason why I let off on the Abundant Growth 
uh, which again, I can back this up, which is nice. But the reason why I let off on Abundant Growth only surface roll is because, one, I wanted to try and draw a land, and two, if I don't draw the land, it's not that big of a deal, but I want to try and maximize my outs to draw in a certain land drop, and an Abundant Growth does that. So I played Abundant Growth, that hits me a pre-ordain, and it goes very quickly here. You can see, for some reason, I only get to see one card, and I don't get to see both, but back here on my online replays on a nutshell, I suppose, but, uh, here, I basically guaranteed my next land drop, which is fantastic. They play a Seeker, I play a Forest, so then I can have some impulsive research. Uh, here, I decide to get rid of the uh, Simic Rook Chamber. The reason why I get rid of the Simic Rook Chamber over, say, a moment to be from something else is because uh, I already have the combo in hand with two Sons of Eight Familiars and an Art Hairmancer. Um, I can already go infinite with uh, Snap. So, all I'm really looking to find here is a snap and then some way to start going off. So, I decide to get rid of that and uh, leave it as is. So, they attack for two, not really a big deal. I cycle in a forest, uh, play a uh, abundant growth in the past the turn here. And uh, if you notice, you know, they just tap out for, for palace sentinels. And uh, I'm going to talk about how big of a deal this is. So, first off, uh, I'm gonna just be clear, they tapped out here, they made a pretty big mistake tapping out. However, in my opinion, it was not a mistake, because they had no idea what I was on. And this is why I partially picked this archetype, is because no one really knows what's going on with it, and I actually just killed them here on turn 6, so they tapped out, and then I got to kill them, which is a pretty big deal. And this is kind of why I picked this deck. Not only was it unknown, but it, it, it would heal people. And this is why I was sort of avoiding the Monarch Nets as well as the Missile Sanctuary Nets. It's like, you are just not able to one-shot people. And I think that's a big deal. A lot of the format in Popper, and I'll talk about this in, in the wrap-up, is, is uh, trending towards a more linear format. Uh, Biles, Affinity, Tron. I would argue Tron is a linear net at this point. Um, that might be an unpopular opinion, but I think you can make the argument that it's a linear archetype. It's just trying to do one thing. And, uh, a lot of the top decks are just linear decks. The Missile Sanctuary decks and the Monarch decks are a little slow. And they're going to lose to one of the linear decks at some point. You can't have all the answers. And, uh, you know, whether that be Tron or Bottles or Affinity or Sompy or Elves or, you know, whatever. You're gonna run into one of them and lose. And that's because you're not trying to be efficient, you're trying to play an interactive game, and unfortunately, I think Popper is heading towards a point where interactive match is really not what we're about. So, here I play familiar, another familiar, I have two blue floating, I get back to impulsive, and now what I can do is I can snap our hair mancer in another land. At this point, our hair mancer costs two, snap costs one, and I have one mana every time through the loop. So, at this point, I'm just letting Matt hit online go through the motions, and, uh, I'm, I'm gonna actually show you what this is like, but in the future games, I'm not gonna go through it. In fact, I purposely stop it. But here, what I do is I cast Impulsive, I start casting Priority, and I keep snapping. Um, I snap a couple times, so I generate a ton of mana, and then I ram out my Impulsive Research with the Molt with the, uh, Art Hero Uh, so then I start drawing Molt Rippers, um, I mean, you can just see I'm just trying to draw more cards and maximize my, uh, my profits. In paper, you can just say I have infinite mana and start going through the motions. But, uh, online, that's not really an option. So, I multiply, then I multiply, I, I, actually, I prevent it prism, but it doesn't really matter. I take the snap, because snap represents another impulsive research, which is a big deal. Um, and, uh, you know, what you do is you can snap an hand man, so then instead of any that snap, you get back a uh, impulsive research. So here I'm just, you know, continuing to go through the motions, and you can see, I mean, I'm drawing, like, a ton of cards this turn. And this is why this net is very similar to Kirk Clan Ironworks. Uh, it's because, even though I didn't have kill them this turn, I'm, I'm drawing, like, a ton of cards. So, I mean, now I have the hill, right, but I just want to illustrate how many cards I drew that turn. I started with 42 at the beginning of the turn, and 
I believe I got to, uh, let's see here, yeah, 18. So, going from 42 to 18 cards, I think I drew, what, 24 cards in a single turn before I was able to combo. And, like, here's the thing, even if I wasn't able to combo kill them, I drew so many cards, it was likely they were dead anyways. And that's what make, makes this deck very similar to Heart Clan Ironworks in Modern, is that you're going to have some of these turns where you don't kill the opponent, but you just drew, like, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 cards, and it's like, you're going to basically have everything, and you're, you're just one card away from killing them, and they're not going to be able to disrupt you. So... Basically, to elaborate on the hill here, for those who are unaware, when I heard you, was, since I have infinite mana with snaps, I can generate infinite mana, and then with some research, instead of targeting myself, I target my opponent, and then I mill them out with some research. Um, I'm not doing that in this game, because one, they might have fairy Maham in the main, I don't know. There's no real reason to risk it. And, uh, two, I just, I have the time, I might as well be conservative. I mean, you saw, I have 20 minutes on the clock. I'll be able to, to do just fine. Um, one thing to note, by the way, is they do not know that I have prohibits. If you look at my, uh, uh, actually, never mind, I guess they do. Yeah, I guess I have a prohibit in the graveyard, huh? I think, if I remember correctly, I was playing this out such that, um, I thought they didn't see that I had prohibits when I was playing this, so that's why I, I was never casting them, because I was trying to hide information, but now, now that I'm watching the replay, I can see there's a prohibit right there. But uh, at the time, I was trying to hide information like that, although to be fair, it's pretty hard to not lose in this position. But I think I was just, uh, I don't know, I was kind of just in the zone, trying to go through the motions. You can see I picked up a prohibit with the flicker, so they definitely knew about it, but... You know, I think that was one of the thought processes that I had. I remember I wrote that down in my notes for the replays, but it turns out they already knew about it, so former me wasn't correct. Anywho, you can see here what I did was I just built up the board, and now I basically set up my hand such that, uh, you know, I'll be able to do pretty much. They're not going to be able to stop what I'm doing. Like, oh, I could have some prohibits here, but basically I just flicker, there's really nothing they can do. Um, they play journey to nowhere, let that resolve, flicker in response. I mean, basically what ends up happening here is they try to remove a lot of my stuff, they fail to do so, and then I heal them with attacking through, you know, our hair managers and monitors and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, really not a ton to say in this particular spot. Uh, I'm just gonna continue going through the motions, I attack, and, uh, they're dead in three turns, and I have enough counter magic, enough flickers, and enough snaps, and all that, that there's really nothing they can do. So, yeah, I'm gonna skip through it a little bit here, just to kind of save some amount of time, but hopefully you can kind of see that's really all I'm doing, it's not super interesting. Uh, in terms of how I sideboarded for this matchup, uh, I boarded out two copies of Moment Space and brought in two copies of Hydroblast. I believe I also might have brought in an Ancient Rudge as my 61st card because I thought they might have relics. I looked at their previous lists and they did have relics, so I believe that was my boarding. I don't look at it in the replay, which was unfortunate, but I, if I remember correctly, that's how I boarded. Going to 61 is not ideal, but it is what it is. So here you can see I'm just playing some land drops, I'm playing some uh, Utopia Sprawls, I'm snapping some other things, and then I'm going to play out a familiar, and then have some pull some research. Uh, one thing that I would argue here is it might have been a mistake to run out the familiar so aggressively. Um, in fact, it might have been correct to just, uh, hold up snap for my familiar, but, uh, you know, this is what I went with. Uh, but it does open me up to a removal spell where if I had a snap or something, I could have just made that invalid. So, not the best play you can argue, but my, my thought process was, you know, well, I have a sight and familiar. But the thing is, if I had, like, let's say they tapped out here and I had the familiar, the sight and familiar in hand, um, I believe I would have been able to um, heal them, just like could have gone familiar, snap, play another familiar, snap again, and then our AM answer go infinite, and because we're tapped out, the relic does nothing. So this might have theoretically been a turn for ill, 
even though my circumstances, but uh, I might have been a little too aggressive with how I played that. It, it's hard to know for certain. This also illustrates my point that I think Relic's a really bad card. Not only, I mean, you saw it killed them for six, so they're under the gun. But what I like about how they play this at the very least is they recognize that they're not really able to hold up mana for Relic because it would slow them down in terms of killing me and putting a clock on. And that's what you need to meet decks like this. You need to have pressure and disruption, but you also, you, your pressure needs to come first. If you're not able to heal me in time, but you only have disruption, typically I can meet that. You need to have a clock. And I like the fact that they tapped out and put the clock online. The problem is that makes Relic pretty bad, and it also illustrates the fact that Relic is just not a good card to begin with. Um, I'm also a little surprised more if they're playing that card because it kind of hurts them as well. Like, if they have Prismatic Strands, or Faithless Lootings, or Battle Screeches in the graveyard, they lose those two and they have to grab the Relic. So, it hurts them just as much as it hurts me, which is not ideal for a card like that. Um, but I just like the fact that I don't really have to worry too much about it. So here I do all the, the Ancient Runs that it boarded in, so now I can blow up the Relic, so it's not even doing anything. And here you can see they're tapping out for one more turn. Um, if I drew a, a Bounce Land here, or another Familiar, they would have been dead. Or another Utopia Scroll, they would have been dead, but unfortunately that did not happen. Here I believe I tried to go off, you know, any map snaps, bouncing some of their stuff, uh, emoting a Moldifer, letting it die, any map Hairmancer, snapping some of their stuff, uh, has St. Preordain. Unfortunately, the Familiar one turn too late. Um, it also makes me wonder if I could have sequenced differently. Uh, I want to see here, just out of curiosity. There might have been a window. Um, we'll see. Yeah, so I vote. Yeah, so I think. Let me see. If I went preordained, took the familiar. Okay, no, I, I would not have had. Okay. I wasn't certain if I might have been able to play a familiar than get infinite mana, but it looks like it would not have changed anything. Um, I was just curious to see. There might have been a to, there might have been a way to see it this entire game such that it could have had he'll turn five or four, but I don't know if it's reasonable. So there's the bounce lands I needed to go infinite, but uh, unfortunately I'm dead. And so I don't think I played this game perfectly. I think I might might have been able to win it. I just don't know if it's worth the, the mental effort to try and go through the entire match, or the entire game, and figure out the particular line that I should have took. Um, I don't think I did anything too heinous, but I was a little aggressive in spots, and it it, it cost me. <laughs> so, this is the, th the third game, uh, and I do keep this hand just because it has a couple land drops, it has counter magic, it has some snaps. And I'm on the play. It's not the most explosive hand by any means, but I still I still wouldn't keep it. So we draw Sun's Eight Familiar, which is a very nice draw. Uh, helps ramp me up a little bit. Uh, and it's just a good body. So I draw Preordain, and I see Snap and Flicker. I bought them both because I don't really need a third Snap, and Flicker is not very good in this particular spot. I would much rather get other things. I craft the Preordain. Uh, even though it's not ideal, because I just bottom some stuff, but I wanted to ensure that I can play out Hairmancer in the following turn, and get back my preordain. Because I want to make sure I have something to do. If I don't do that, then I'm just sitting there, and that's pretty bad against the rest of that. Like, more or less, like, they would kill me theoretically, if they have a nut draw, so... I should be the one applying the pressure, not them. So here I draw a, uh... A, uh... Abundant growth, and I can play a familiar while holding up a snap, which is pretty nice, I think, considered. So here, I believe they play another seat in which I bounce, or they, they replay the one that I bounce. They play some tokens, uh, and then the following turn, I believe I'm just going to, uh, get back my, uh, pre name with the Art Hairmancer. But I draw one, I hit Prism, and Utopia Small. Now I can play the Prism, which is great, and I can play the Utopia Small. So you can see here, I'm very close to going infinite, and I believe I just decided to get a little aggressive here. Uh, they run on Elemental Blast, I'm able to prohibit. And here I'm just trying to be as aggressive as possible. I don't think they have removal. If they did, they wouldn't try to kill my familiar. So now what I can do is I, can, I, I have another snap, so if they do have removal, I have an answer for it. But also, um, I might have felt just trying to be aggressive and, and 
start looking for stuff because if they have rally, I'm dead, so I don't really want to walk into that. So here I hit a moment for it and start snapping it. Unfortunately, they have a third pyroblast. Uh, but if they didn't, I might have been able to just get them there, which would have been kind of nice. But uh, here I get back the Moldifer and the Air Man here, which is fairly nice, uh, all things considered. Uh, I play the Island and Pass. I believe I played the Island over the Evolving Wilds because I bought them some stuff with the Pyrenean. Uh, and I don't really feel like I need to do it. And also, I'm fine mana wise, like, just need hard, so I don't really need to play it. So here, I. I believe I get to go infinite. I, so at this point, unfortunately, I can't pull up the graveyard, but uh, I believe they played, I think, two or three blast effects. Uh, and so, in my mind, based on how they were playing, I had a read that they didn't lightly have anything. And also, it, let's say they had another pirate blast, right? Like a third a third copy. If I believe they only has two, like prohibited the first and then the second one, it, it resolved. But let's say they had the third pirate blast. What I knew if I could say in response, Flitter or Hairmancer and an island, then I would prohibit their pirate blast, and then they need to have another pirate blast, or they need to have a lightning bolt. The problem is, it's not likely they have a lightning bolt, because once again, if they did, they would have healed my stuff by now, when I was tapped out. So. I don't think they have any removal, so they need to have double pyro blast. And if they do, I still get to ask Moldifer, and then I'm still, you know, one snap away from going off. And if they have nothing, which I think they do, then they're dead. Because at this point, our Hammer Flitter snap bounces their entire board, and I don't even need to have hill at that point. I can just bounce their board, and then get my prohibit back and put them in a rough spot. So I get prohibit first for protection site. Uh, and then I get back the snap, I target their thing, and they see the writing on the wall. I'm able to just sort of go off, uh, snap their entire board while generating mana, and, uh, heal them from there. So, that was the first match. Uh, overall, I think, you know, I, uh, I played that fairly well. Like, game one, uh, they just, they didn't know what was going on, and they tapped out. Uh, game two, I might have been able to see that differently. This deck's pretty tricky. Uh, I would have to rewatch that to kind of get a better insight, but, uh, I don't think I played that one perfectly. And then game three, I mean, I, I just kind of started jamming and jamming, and I was able to put the plot online, and that's one of the things I like about this archetype, is that you can just have um, help people, and then they die, or you can just play a fair game and just flip or lock them out of the game. Uh, both are fine, and I, I've had a good time with them, so... Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was game number one, or rather, match number one, and I'll see you guys for the second match. Alright, so we're back for the second match. Uh, I believe this one we are up against... Yeah, Matthias. So, Matthias is on Tron. Um, and I just want to talk about the hand real quick. I definitely keep this hand. I can, you know, turn when you tell me it's roll. And then if I draw a forest the following turn, I can play forest, you throw me a scroll again, and then cast impulsive, which is ridiculous. Like, turn, uh, turn two, have four mana in play, and draw three cards. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a very good draw. Um, so yeah, I play you throw me a scroll, I pass, they play a Thron land. Uh, I don't blame them. You can see the, the replay starting to lag a little bit. Uh, here I think I decide, because they're on Tron, um, I could have gone land, it might have been better actually, just a land you throw me as well, but I think in my mind I was like, well, they're on Tron, and if they have it in Roma Horror, they're gonna bounce my land with you throw me as well, so instead of putting myself into a position where, I, th I think this was how I remember it, it's, it's been a while, so I apologize for not being super coherent, but, um, if I remember correctly, I didn't want to go land Utopia's Roll because they're on Tron. If they're not on Tron, I would absolutely do that. But because they are, they could possibly do Roma Horror my land, and then they're getting rid of two Utopia's Roll, which is somewhat frustrating. Whereas if they only get rid of one, I can still have more heal. There's still ways to have more heal where you, if you have a couple familiars in play, you can just go, uh, Forest, Utopia's Roll, Abundant Growth, you know, start going off. If you have like a bounce land in play, so that's what I was doing. Here, I kind of draw pretty poorly. Um, you can see they're on Tron, which is less than ideal. Uh, 
turn three, and I'm not really drawing anything, so I believe I play a, uh, Evolving Wilds, and they play a, uh, Sentinel. So, the reason why I let up with Evolving Wilds is because I'm not playing Brainstorms or anything, or Ponder, so, uh, the thinning is relevant, especially in a deck like mine that's trying to draw a ton of cards very quickly. But also, um, the reason why I'm going to prohibit their Sentinel here is because it's sort of gamble. They could have a prophetic prism and then it get blown out, but if they don't, they're not able to do anything this turn, and I would rather that be the, the outcome. And it looks like they didn't have anything, so uh, I got fairly lucky. And then what I'm doing is I'm shuffling with the uh, Ash Barons, because once again, thinning is relevant. Uh, so I go Forest, Abundant Growth, don't draw anything relevant. I'm going to hold on to the Utopia as well, because I just don't want to get blown out. And you can see they haven't really been able to do anything in these past couple turns because I, I stopped their, their Sentinel. And that's a big deal, right? If Tron is able to get Tron quickly, but they're not able to get their Colored Forces online quickly, uh, that can slow them down tremendously, and I think it was worth the gamble. So here, what I do is I'm, I believe I tap out for the Airmancer because I, w I have a window, and also I need to start drawing cards and doing things, and uh, most research is the best way to do that. And here, they, uh, start tapping low again, you can see, once again, they're just trying to draw cards and keep up with me, but next turn, I'm gonna just start kind of going crazy, which is, uh, pretty nice, all things considered. So, I believe now is when I deploy the Utopia Scroll. Um, the reasoning is that I'm fairly close to um, healing. If I draw a Sunset Familiar, they're dead. Close, or they're close to dead, it's not an ENT. But what happens is, my forest now taps for blue, 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 and I have an island in place, so I can tap two lands for blue, for four blue. If I draw a familiar, then that would allow for me to combo, because the familiar means that, actually, I guess it doesn't mean I combo. No, I need a certain familiar. Yeah, I would need a certain familiar. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm not doing the math right in my head, but my thought was, if things are favorably here, I might be able to have um, heal, so I should just go for it. So I, I do draw you tell me as well, so I'm fairly close to um, healing. I play a prism, and then I just hold up snap. If they have it in Romahorn, it's unfortunate, but they have to just tap out to do it, and if they don't have it, then I'm in fairly good shape. They're in a flicker here, I just have to let that happen. Um... I don't like how they stat that, by the way, you can make Oracle resolve second because you want to have the most information when picking. Um, and then here they play a map. I let that happen, they crack the map. And here it looks like they don't have much. What I do here is I bait them with a snap, and I believe they end up counterspelling it. Um, and then I draw a preordain. So, I see two Euterpius, I see two, uh, cards I don't need, Euterpius are on the land, I bottom them, I see the snap, and now you can tell I'm, I'm very close to, to, to winning this. Uh, I grab the Impulsive, and I hit exactly what I need, so I hit the Sunset Familiar and the snap. Um, so, I was fairly close to going out the previous turn, I was just missing, uh, two more things, and I, I hit one of them, but, uh, here I basically hit it all. I hit a bounce land for more mana, I hit a snap to, to actually continue going off, and I hit the familiar which I need. Um, at this point I would just have to ensure that I go off. Um, but if I were halt directly, I, I, I'd find what I need. So here we play the familiar, then I play the airmancer. I keep the loop going for a little bit. I'm netting, I believe, two mana through each loop, something like that. Uh, so I knew this like 10 times, get 10 mana, and then just start going off. Um, I, you know, Elsie Flitter is a lot, it means they're dead. But you can see, like, the loop is basically online, and their draw was not fast enough. So yeah, I impulse him, then I impulse him again, I find the Flitter, and they're dead. Um, so I believe I just stop. I might continue the replay a little bit, but, um, I think. I'm not sure why I continued it. I think there might have. I'm looking at my notes here. There might have been a reason. Um, sorry, they're, they're off screen. I just wrote them down. But I think my 
Oh, I think, yeah, I, I know what I was doing. I think I was illustrating that I was going to kill them with impulsive research. Um... Something like that. Yeah. I think, yeah, it was against Tron, I'm not going to kill them through combat. If you notice the against the Boyer's matchup, um... I... Was... Oh, I'm sorry. Against the Boyer's matchup, I... Was healing them through combat because they might have relics or they might have fairy mahabs or something weird in the main board. So I don't want to give them more cards. Oh, I didn't know this was something that's a little weird. Um, I don't know. Anywho, uh, that was basically why I did what I did. And uh, I was afraid that. Again, so they would do that. Again, Tron, no, they're not playing that. No competent Tron pilot would play Fairy Mahab or Relic in their deck because it's bad in the mirror, and I think most Tron players know that. Um, it doesn't, doesn't do anything, really. So, most Tron players recognize that you should just instead try and go over the top and play Crusher or something, but... Against Tron, I'm gonna kill them with the Impulsive Hill condition, I'm not gonna attack. So this is my opener, uh, I'm mulleting this hand because it hit, doesn't do anything. I know the replay is lagging a little bit. And here you can see it just skips through, uh, and goes to my 5 card hand. Um, I, I don't know what else to say, I apologize, but, uh, Matt here online replays tend to be rather plenty at times, and just kind of, uh, not very smooth, so I apologize for that. But I think this is a fine heap. Um, I can go... It looks like I'm mulling into four. Jesus. Uh... Yeah, it's like I drew it hard for... Yeah, I'm, I'm mulled to four. Wow. Did I win this game? I don't think I did. If I remember correctly, I think they just greeted me. Yeah, so I think what I do is I... I don't know. The replay is starting to become rather... Rather clunky. Uh... It looks like it just... Freezing on me. Uh, yeah. So it's it, unfortunately the replay here is being a little clunky. You can see that it's not being super smooth, but basically, I mean, I'm just gonna skip to the punchline. Uh, it's, it looks like it was just clunky. Uh, it, basically they resolved the crusher and I died. There's really nothing else to say. I'm bullet into four, I think so. Yeah, not much of a game. This hand, though, is fantastic. I have two, uh, you throw me some rolls, I have an abundant growth, I have a uh, preordained impulsive. I mean, this is the dream hand, it's everything you never ask for. Um, so I believe I keep this hand. Uh, looks like the replay is lagging again. Once again, not a ton I knew about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna start going through it. But basically, uh, I, if, I don't know, the replay is... I don't know, Matt here online is not the most quality piece of software. Uh, yeah, I remember this now, the replay. I, I only get it to not be clunky and terrible. Uh, but basically, um, yeah, I think it breaks at the end too. Yeah, I don't know, I apologize. But, uh, basically what ended up happening was, I baited them on their turn. They had, I, th I thought they had a pirate blast, so I ran out of snap, I baited them, and then, um, they tapped out on their turn, and then I was able to get the infinite mana loop, and then I was able to get our hair man impulsive, uh, and then I hit, like, another impulsive, I played that, and then I hit, like, a mold ripper, I played that, and then I hit a prophetic prism, and then I played that, and I knew it was at the ghostly flitter, so then I had, uh, ghostly flitter plus, uh, our hair man, and then I had a mold ripper in play, and a prophetic prism in play, so... I had a lot of things going my way. By the way, in terms of how I sideboarded for the matchup, I don't believe I specified that. I boarded out two moments of peace, uh, and a reaping the raves, and I just brought in three power blasts of my own. Um, so once again, I, I apologize for replace and it crap me. It's not working fairly good. It, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't know why matchup online is terrible at replays, but that's unfortunately just how it is. Um... But yeah, I mean, I was able to, to take him down, and uh, I'm 2 out at this point, and, you know, game one against Tron is fairly good, and both more, he just had out the final window, so. Uh, yeah, that was uh, the second match, I apologize for the medium, 
greatest is poor quality, but, you know, hopefully the next one works. Alright, so we're back for the, I believe, third match here. Yeah, round three against Milster. This one also breaks on me, just a heads up. Um, I tried going on match here online to see if I can make it work, but it's still broken, so... Nothing I can do. It starts up right near the end. Um, but it's, it's fairly smooth up, up until that point. Um, yeah, so here, uh, Milster, I didn't know what they were on. Against, uh, Hannah Stone, I absolutely knew what they were playing. But against Matthias, I don't believe I put them on Tron. But Tron's okay, I can race them, so it wasn't too scary. And I also have a pretty clear and concise sideboard plan. Um, but against Millstray, I thought he might have been on Blue White Familiars, but I had a feeling he might be on something like counter magic, like counter spells and stuff, based on how he was playing this, so I wasn't running out my prisms currently, I was being a little cautious, like, the Radiant Fountain really threw me off, I was like, I don't know what they're playing. I thought maybe Blue Red Flicker, because Hunter 3 used to play that, but I was still a little uncertain. So, here I run out a prism, just because I believe they end up counterspelling it, which is fine. And then I just run out the second one. I wanted to make sure I can do two things and guarantee something would go through. Um, but I believe game one, I just don't really draw anything. I did have several windows where it was like, if I find X, Y, and Z, they're dead. But it just never really happened, so I just hope you small, and I abundant growth, and I mean, you can see here if... I draw like impulsive research or something, I, I can start going off, but I just never really find what I need. Like, I'm so close to just healing them, and they keep tapping out, which is the most brutal part of it all, is they tap very, very low, but I was never really able to get that window that I needed. So, yeah, they, they keep cycling, they keep doing what they have to do, uh, they're playing all year, by the way, they, they uh, ended up top mating with this list, which I was pretty happy about because uh, I missed playing sort of blue red control decks in Popper, and I'm kind of glad to see people are still making it work. So here that he starts the flicker, and at this point it's pretty clear it's over. Uh, once that happens, like, you're not favored. However, um, I thought I'm still playing it out because uh, I might have a shot, and I, I was able to get a window, but I just never drew anything, and as you can see, I believe the replay just breaks, and, uh, yeah, I'm just like, well, the replay breaks, I'm trying to show anything, uh, and nothing works, so, yeah, there's two mouses here, right, I apologize for that, but the first one, it breaks halfway through, once again, nothing I could have done about that, just how magic online works, um, but yeah, I lost M1, just never really drew anything. Uh, in terms of how I boarded, I believe I brought in, uh, let's see here. I brought in three Pyroblast, one Eaton Rouse, and I took out, oh, I also, let's see, I took out two, two Moments Beasts, and a Snap, and I think I brought in three Pyroblast and one Eaton Rouse, I think something like that, so I went to 61, but, you know, that's alright. So here I just run out my familiar. The reason why is because I don't think they have removal, so if that stays in play, it's good for me. Uh, so even if I get to use it for like a turn, I'm favored. I run out another familiar, and then I play Bounce Land, because at this point, I can get both of them out, and now my, my hard draw spell costs one mana, which is insane. So I run out Utopia Small, then I play it Preordain, see a Pyroblast, uh, play it Impulsive, they Pyroblast, I'm fine with that, play another Impulsive, uh, disown a land. Play for your name, Super Fun Prism, and a uh, Utopia Small. Uh, I end up taking both. And at this point, if I find like a snap, they're dead. Uh, but it looks like they have another Pyroblast, so I'm not able to do anything about that currently. Uh, but yeah, so like now I have a Flitter, that's basically free. Uh, you can see like I have a ton of mana at my disposal, and my opponent's not in the best spot. It also looks like they don't have a ton of removal if they're not healing my familiars, but to be fair, I do have no sleep later for that. Um, but once I get the third one, it's like, removal's not very good at this stage. All I'm really looking for is, uh, hard draw. But based on how they're, uh, fetching, like they got Double Mountain, uh, I had an inkling that 
they have double tire blast in hand, so I want to make sure that I don't walk into that, and you can even tell based on how they're capping, it's fairly likely they have double, double tire blast, so there are hand bands that that, like a pre-unit, I think, which makes sense, it looks like they're trying to find some action. Uh, and so then here, I drew the second art hair answer. Now, in my mind, I thought, well, I'm definitely going to be able to get something through. It just is a matter of what. And so this was like a pretty big decision point, because I believe I end up winning the turn, or winning the game this turn. So what I believe I do is like, yo, I lead off with our hair answer, they pyroblast, and then... I don't know, I, I, we'll see, we'll see, I, I, I think, no, I lead up with Mulder for me, so I want to have double here, man, so, yeah, so I went up this, they, yeah, 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 alright, now I can get that, and pull some research, up bottom, uh, those two, and then I pass, I wanted to keep the raping the raves, and, you know, I didn't win this turn, but I beat the double pirate blast, that's what it was, and because I got the Raping the Raves now, I'm able to, to, to just fight through any removal they have. And to make it so that I can set up a turn that's favorable for me. I believe this is the moment where I do it. Because they're tapped extremely low, and they need to have, like, Dispel, Dispel, Pirate Blast. So I, yeah. I have Reaping here to get back those two. Um, yeah, so you get back Ham Answer, and then... Huh, I thought, I mean, in hindsight... I think what would have been better is to just go for the flicker there, like say, a okay, flicker, hair master, prophetic prism, because if they counterspell that, then that's fine for me, because then I can start tapping them out, and then I'll, I'll be able to combo kill. Uh, I mean, I, I still need to find a snap, but even if I don't, I'm drawing a ton of cards anyways, and I'm f running them out of counter magic, but... Yeah, I, th I think that might have been the, the better line. But here I have some Moldic for the uh, Red Elemental Blast it. And then my Moldic resolves. Uh, and then I run out another Hammer so I'm going to get back a. Uh... Alright, here, yeah, so here what I do is I flip those two, get back for Hammer, for Hammer that, and then I, I have the heal. So it took a couple turns to get it, but I mean, their draws were a little flooded a little bit. And you can see here, I'm just kind of making the circle motion with my mouse, saying I have a loop. And, uh, yeah. Basically, what I ended up doing there, uh, was... I was afraid they might have brought in relics. Uh... So... I think I brought in Ancient Rudge in the post one game, so I'm not 100%. I might have brought it in M3, so I had a feeling they might have had relics. But, um... How I won that game was I didn't heal them and pull some research. Instead, what I did was I just uh, pirate blast to their entire board, and then I set it up so that I had like eight power in play with a handful of like prohibit, prohibit, pirate blast, pirate blast, pirate blast, flicker, flicker. And it's like they're not going to beat that, so that, that was basically what I did. Game three, unfortunately, that one breaks on me as well. Uh, there's, there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm really bummed about that because I won this game. And I multiplied, which was just, oh, it was so good. I was really sad about that. Uh, I bought them, both of those, and I, I draw a utopia spell, which I'm pretty happy about, but I don't need another flicker or abundant growth. I went out the utopia spell because it's next to mana, and that's more important than hand tripping at this stage. Um, but you can see, like, I'm not in the best position, yet I'm still able to, uh, to get and win this game. It was a really cool game, I wish I would have shown it, because there were so many decision points, and I navigated it very, very well. Um, but, it never, never came out. Also, the, the best part was, I actually never played a familiar the entire game. Like, that was the best part, I never had a familiar in play. I didn't even combo kill them, I won. Uh, yeah, so like, here it breaks, you can see, right, I'm tapping mana, and then I pass, I never did that. Uh, for some reason it says I did. So you can see it's starting to just do random things that never occurred. Like here I'm just tapping mana, instead of playing a hard draw spell, it just, it passes to them now they're doing something, but nothing's happening. Uh, I mean you can see it says there like, turn 5, turn 6, like nothing happens. Uh, it's breaking pretty hard. 
So yeah, it might. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the game, but uh, I killed them through like Eaton Rouse. Uh, I had Reaping the Raves. I had an Atom Relic. I beat them through. It was a really cool game, and I was really proud of how I played that. But oh well, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, so we're back for the fourth match. Uh, this one I believe is against Ponderous. Um, yeah, Ponderous. Uh, yeah, Ponder CZ. They were on Modern Green Land, but Henry should you think about it, it's a really bad matchup for us because we're playing in Utopia Thralls, Abundant Thralls, we only have 18 lands. I mean, I feel like that's pretty clear. Land destruction is not good for us. Um, yeah, basically, I was like, oh crap, we're gonna die. And you can see what's the match online, it's just moving garbage, and the replays were lagging. Basically, I'm just on a kind of be quite about it, because there's not a lot to say in M1. Basically, they play at Rusher, they have some land destruction when they need it. Um, yeah, they had Thermal Arts and the guy that destroys the land, so... There was nothing that could have done. Really not a lot to say about M1. M2, how I boarded was that for out two moments, me for two Electricery. I thought Electricery might be able to heal a Mana Elf, which would slow them down. Uh, it's not ideal, but I just don't have any sideboard cards for this matchup. Modern Green Land Destruction is not really something I was preparing for. Um, I thought they might be on it, but it's just like, if it's one player, it's not worth even having a sideboard card for that, honestly. You gotta, you gotta know when to pick your medals, and if I'm gonna run into them, then soak me and I'll take the L. Uh, basically they buff up the land. I just run out of bounds land, it's nothing them to blow it up. Uh, they never do, which is very likely. I, 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 I believe game two, they just never draw any land destruction, which is fairly in for me. And you can see once again that match online is just lighting on me for no reason. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening, and it just, it, all of a sudden it jumps forward to random spots. Uh, I, I apologize, but basically what ended up happening was. Uh, they didn't have any land destruction, they got a lot of elephants, and then I was able to just block here and flick or draw more cards, uh, have him it up, and then, uh, yeah, they lost. I just outvalued them, I got a loop online, and I just beat them with the fair game plan. And then this one, they just drew some land destruction, they got the mono in play, um, and I just was not quite able to assemble what I needed in time. Uh, I believe there was a small mistake I made where I classed up for some research and I should have had the snap in hand, but I had to prohibit because I thought prohibit might have been good, but then they topped up the mono and prohibit doesn't stop that, so in hindsight I probably should have had the snap because the snap I believe would have bought me an entire turn, which is a pretty big deal. But the replay breaks here and it's just really laggy and not very good. Uh, so there's not nothing to say, but I end up losing the match. I won game two, but I lost games one and three. So even when a game in this match is fairly lucky for me, because I think it, it's just a really bad matchup. Uh, but there's really not nothing I can say. It's match online, it's just lighting. I mean, you can see, like, here, I mean, it's only, it's, so I'm trying to, trying to illustrate it, right? So, like, we're here in the replay, and then it just jumps to that all of a sudden. Like, I, I don't know... <laughs> I don't know how to fix that, but match it online, it like freezes, and I'm like, oh, it's the replay Martin, and then it just shoots ahead, and I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what's happening anymore. So, yeah, there's not a fun I knew about some of the Martin replays. I recorded this right after, but, I don't know, it is what it is. So, yeah, that's about the point is to yell the I can give for that match. Not a lot to say. Um, really, just not a favorable matchup, and when I won, they never hit, had any land destruction. Um,. Uh, no, they did have one, but I prohibited that, but, um, yeah, they, none of their land destruction ever actually resolved, or they never actually drew a ton of it, um, and then the other games, they had land destruction, and, yeah, I mean, that's, that's about it. So, yeah, we're three and one at this point, and I'll see you guys in match. All right, so we're back for match number five. Uh, here we are up against Blue Black Delver, which... I have been able to beat it before, but if they have a nut draw with like lots of delvers and it's we're not favored. So I decided to keep this hand because I'm on the play. I named blue with my utopia well I'm not gonna name white. Uh and they have turn with delver, which is not ideal. So here I preordain, I see an evolving wilds and a land. I play the evolving wilds and it immediately. Um 
Or, yeah, if I'm not gonna draw the other utopia as well, I'd rather just, uh, I'd rather just be able to ask and pull some research next turn. Uh, and they have a set in Delmer, which is not great for me. Uh, so here I snap at Delmer just to buy some time, I prohibit, and then I discard Flitter and a Sunscape. Uh, they flip their Delmer, they attack me for three again, they play their another Delmer, and they play another Delmer. So, this is just a very good draw from them, there's nothing I can really do about it, and once again the replay starts to lag out here. I, I apologize, there's really nothing I can do about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna just kind of speed it up a little bit, just because there's not a ton to say. Basically, um, yeah, I'll just kind of go to the spot, but there's nothing I can do. They, they have, uh, Purple Delver, and yeah, there's nothing I can do. Um, Purple Delver is a pretty good draw, it's gonna kill most people, so you need that to win, and they had that. Uh, this game is also lighting, I tried getting it to work, but it didn't. But basically, they... For some reason, they never had Delvers, and they brought in the Monarch, which is not good against me. So I have to prohibit against that they have counter spell. it's fine. But basically what ends up happening here is I'm just gonna go through the motions. Once again, I apologize for having to skip through things, but the replay, it's pretty laggy. I'll, I'll try w watching it, but I remember correctly, there's just random breaks in it where it's like it waits for a while, and then it jumps to another spot in the game. I would love to be able to talk about different decision points, but I mean, you can see here, nothing's happening, and then all of a sudden, Mono comes into play, and yeah, it's like a very, just, it's terrible quality. So I'm gonna just skip ahead. Basically, I set up a loop, or I set up some, not a loop, but I set up window for myself, where I need a reaping that raves off, I get the reaping that raves off, I get a familiar in play, and then I'm able to loop here. Um, yeah, so I'm able to get the loop, they, I have infinite man and they die, not a lot to say. Um, the reason why I was able to even do this was because they never had a turn with Delver, their hand was very, very slow. And they also were trying to, like, grind me out with, like, Miss St. Therese and stuff, and you're never going to be able to do that. St. Therese had a poor end to the what I'm doing. You can see it's 26 to 17. It just wasn't enough. Game 3 is also lagging, but I'll give you a quick TLDR. In fact, it doesn't even update. You can see it just breaks here, which is wonderful for Magic Online purposes. But basically, they have turn 1 Delmer, they have turn 2, another Delmer, and then they have turn 3, I think, like another Delmer. And so at this point, they had a triple Delmer draw game 1 and game 3, which is not great for me. It's not something I can control. So, you know, it's out of my, out of my hands. So if it happens, it happens. But. Um, there was, what I did have was my opening hand, if I can show it, if it doesn't break on me. My opening hand, you can see here, had double Pyroblast. So what I was able to do was I was able to Pyroblast one of the Delmers, and then there was a window where they have two Delmers in play, and I'm at, like, I think nine life. And both of them are flipped. And they have two blue open. What I was fine, and I think I had like a familiar in play. What I was fine to do was, you know, snap. Oh, I also had a prophetic prism in play. So what I was fine to do was I was trying to snap one of the Delmers. And I had the Pyro Blast in hand, I had a Motor in hand, and I had an Ocean Flitter in hand. What would have happened was, I, if, if the snap resolved on the Delmer, I would have gotten to untap a summit rope hammer and a land that taps for two blue. Then what I could have done is I could have revoked the motor for draw two while that's on the stack has slitter on Ripper and on my prophetic prism. Right? So they only have one counter spell like Pirate Blaster and then they die. Well they don't die, but I draw like five cards and I have a blocker for their Delver. So that was a spot that I was going to get into. But unfortunately, not only do they have the triple Delver, but they had double Dispel, so what happened was I went to snap on their Delver, they Dispel back, I Pyroblast their Dispel, and then they Dispel a certain time, and then I die. Um, so then I'm just going to die to their board state, but... Oh, and then they also topped at the swap and snuff out my familiar, so... You know, everything that could have went right for them went right for them, but... You can tell, like, that's out of my control, right? I, I don't get to decide that they draw a double dispel. I don't get to decide that they draw, you know, a swamp so they can, you know, snuff out, right? 
it's just a point of action, right? It's very instant in, in, in my favor, but, um, ignoring that, I think game 2 I played very well. Once again, would have loved to show it to you guys, but, <sighs> Matt here online is not very good at replays. But, uh, yeah, I'm 3-2 and two at this point, which is not great. If we have one more round, and even to have a shot of mate and top mate, I have to win it, so. I'll, I'll see you guys in the final, final match. So, Matt, for match number six, I forgot to put it in the folder. Um, I watched the original, it was really bad. So I tried, um, re-recording it, and it still breaks, so it feels unfortunate, but... Uh, it breaks in game 2, game 1 it doesn't break, so we can talk about that at least, there are some interesting decisions. So, see if it hurt you if they've only ever played elves and poppers, so it's fairly obvious they're going to be on elves. I would be extremely, extremely surprised if they were on anything but elves, so. I'm on the play, this is my opener. This hand, I'm going to be 100% honest, is kind of amble. If I don't draw a certain land, I kind of die. But, if I do draw a set and land, the hand becomes very, very playable. Uh, it has snap to bounce their problematic creatures, it has moment beast, it has pulsar research, it has moldifer. I just need to draw a set and land. And I'm gonna need to draw for my draw set, and I'm gonna need to draw off of London growth. So I thought it was worth the amble, I know what they're on. So, you know, let's see if the risk pays off. And sure enough, it does. While it's not, you know, <laughs> the land I would have wanted, it bounce land's not terrible. So here, what I do is I snap their guy, then I play a prism, and then I play a familiar. So I kind of got everything I wanted. I also play a familiar, and also hit my next two land drops. It's, it's perfect. Um, so now what I do is I impulse them, just earning a bounce land, play an island, see so impulse them in a land. Uh, I believe at top both. We'll see in a second. So here, what I liked about how they played this was, they kept both Queen Rangers in hand. Because what the, I think what they were banking on is me saying, well, I'm not gonna die, right? They only have one Timberwatch to play, and you know, they might have one Queen Ranger, but they're not gonna have two, so if I tap out, they're not gonna kill me. Turns out they are, right? They had double Queen so I was very smart in holding up moments to me, so like, I don't know what it was, but my gut feeling was just, you know, they untapped the timber watch, just be careful, because, see if it hurt me, I don't know what it is, but they just, they, they always have it when they need to. So, what I ended up doing here was I just forced them to, uh, go all in with their, uh, queen rangers before using moment speed, because I want to make sure they have to, uh, use the most force, so that way it limits the queen rangers. So here I impulse them, just learning to land, and then what I do is I, uh, so, or actually, no, 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 let's back that up, let's back that up, I went a little too fast. I don't just earn the land, what do I just earn? Let's see here, I'm interested in seeing that. So it looks like I just earned our hair mansion and something else. Pre-unit, oh, uh, pre-unit at hair mansion, that's not the worst. I only need one at hair mansion to go off, and I don't need a pre-unit with multi different play, so that makes sense. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm gonna eat infinite mana, and of course, the top did this melody. I mean, he's always nice, but uh, I one thing I, I I will say is that I respect that they're playing this melody because a lot of prod play or a lot of elves players do not play this melody. They just play winding way, and fe and that makes the prod matchup so much worse. Like whenever I play prod, this melody is the one card I hear the most because that can heal you in an instant, whereas. Um, Winding way is a joke, so this melody is a great draw for them, but also they're smart putting it in. Now, what I have here is I have infinite mana, but I don't have infinite blue mana. I only have infinite colorless, or infinite green mana rather, which might as well be infinite colorless mana, but... Um, so here what I do is I just start going through the motions, um... And if I recall correctly, there's going to be a line where I, you know... We'll, we'll just let it play out for a second, but, uh, I believe I snapped the Priest of Titania, and the reason why I do that is because Priest of Titania plus Distant Melody is how they're able to one-shot people. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm basically saying, well, I don't have infinite blue mana, so I'm gonna try and get as many cards as possible. And what I do here is I can, you know, say, okay, our air mancer, snap your Priest of Titania. And so now I can continue to keep going infinite. 
And what I'm trying to do here is, if I'm not able to go off, like let's say I fizzle, I'm at least not dead the next turn, right? They don't have Priest of Satani in play, but now I know the Ghostly Flitter and they're dead. If what I knew here is Ghostly Flitter is infinite with, uh, Infinite Rain Mana. If you have Elsie Flitter, Infinite Rain Mana, and Prophetic Prism, you can keep filtering the blue mana into the Prophetic Prism. Uh, and then Flitter out here, Mansion Prism, and then draw your entire net, and then you find the site and you throw it as well, and then you kill them, so, uh, yeah. Or like an Abundant Earth, I think that's what I need in there, but whatever the case is, you'll find it, and then you kill them. Basically, here I brought in one moment piece of one electric ray, and I put out Re Minute Ray and Prohibit, but unfortunately, the game just never works. Uh, I tried to be recording it, and nothing nothing happened. Uh, it just breaks here, it never actually starts the game. But I end up winning. It's pretty similar to the first game. Um, I just bounce when I need to bounce, they don't have any interaction, and because I have things like moment speed and snap and prohibit, I'm able to stop what they're doing, and they don't really have any significant interaction for me. And what happens is, I actually go through all my molder first, and they're all in my graveyard, because I kept promoting them, trying to draw through my deck and find the combo. And I did find the top though, but because I pointed out reaping the rains, I couldn't get back my mold first. So how I killed them was thankfully they never had a well wisher, but I killed them just by attacking with their airmancers. I snapped their entire board and then I just killed them with their airmancers. Um it took a while, it was like a ten turn clock, but I didn't want to impulse some research to kill them because they would have fairy uh, they would have Relic or something weird, like, I don't know, I guess not, not really, it wouldn't matter, but they would have fairy uh, you, you don't know, and there's no reason to take that risk if you're guaranteed able to kill them through natural attacks, so, uh, that's what I did, I just said, you know what, I'm gonna play it safe, I have a lot of time, this is game two, uh, I have a lot of time on the clock, might as well play it safe and just kill them with, uh, impulsive research, or, er, uh, ham answers and not impulsive research, so, at this point, I'm 4-2. and two. I was 11th place going into the last round. And... I made top mate. I snuck in at the 8th seed. And, once again, that's a sign of, right, of luck going in my favor, right? That is a game of luck, as well as a game of skill. But, you have to recognize that there is variance in it. And this is what it went for me, right? In the finals, you'll see, in a little bit, things did not go my way, but... You know, I can't really say, oh, you know, I'm the most unlucky person ever, when it's like, I literally got in the top mate on Breakers, which is straight up luck. So, yeah, we made top mate, and, uh, I'll see you guys in the quarterfinals. Alright, so that for the quarterfinals, I tried re-recording this one, because quality was really, really bad, so, you know, it's a little, a little different. I recorded this, like, a day ago, and, uh, by the way, I just want to say, now that I have the time, this was the Avatar. <laughs> that we got for winning, for, for, for top mating the, the pop ship, so that's not top mating, just mating the, qualifying for the event. And I was just like, wow, we got, we got ripped off. I mean, no one cares, it was a silly avatar, but damn, I felt ripped off. So I'm, I'm against Pass L, uh, Rob's man, I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing his last name, I apologize. But he's a very good player, um, I've beaten him, and I've lost to him, but whenever I play against him, I'm, like, not thrilled about it, because he, he he's a really good player. Uh, but I, I suspected he was going to be on Tron, because, um, last time I talked to him, we both kind of agreed Tron was stupid, and I remember correctly, he was saying, you know, why should I bother playing anything else when Tron is just the best deck? And I, I, I put him on Tron, and sure enough, he was on Tron. Uh, so I, I still think, if I remember correctly, the replays are not very good. They still aren't how to crap me. Um, but I kept this hand because it had a, uh, Utopia Small and an Evolving Wild, but you can see the replays are kind of, of laggy. Uh, basically I lose M1. Uh, looks like it's still playing, but, uh, they have it in Roma Horror here. It's basically how I die. They have, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just skip to the punchline. If I remember correctly, it breaks on me, like, around here. Yeah, like, M2, I don't believe it works. It just kind of gets stuck here. And then... M3, it also just breaks on me. So, I, I tried re-recording re re it to see 
and just letting the whole thing run, but not nothing changed. Um, the only mistake I think I made in one was I snapped the multiplayer so I can play mine. I think it would have been better to just ask both of me so it's only about the multiplayer. There's no reason to have to hard ask one. Um, so that was a pretty idiotic play. Um, but other than that, I mean, you know, it really wasn't a ton that I, I, I think I did wrong. Um, I needed to find, like, a familiar, as well as some abundant growth, and I kind of started flooding a little bit, I ran out of things to do, uh, and then he had a quick new Roma Horror online. So, yeah, that's really about it. Unfortunately, I can't show the post more games, but basically, just to give a quick recap, uh, game two, I beat him through fair match, I would say I never had more guild. Uh, I just got two hair matches in play, and then I started, uh, flickering them, and it's basically where it's like, if you have the flicker lot in play, you win, right? You don't need to have more healing, you just went off that, so, uh, I beat him on that basis, and then game three, uh, I had a, I really wish I could have shown this, but I thought about do I have a window or not, and I, I, I forced myself to get a window where I started a fight on the end of his turn, he tapped out, and then I was like, okay, if I find exactly this here, I win, and I hit it, and then I won. So I was able to get uh, infinite mana, and then he saw the writing on the wall, and then he snooped. But, unfortunately, I can't actually show that, because Matt Online is not great with replays, so... Yeah, I, uh, I apologize about that, but it is what it is, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the semi-finals. Alright, so we are back, uh, for the semi-finals, we are up against Ham Hughes, another crowd player. Uh, what's really cool about this is he took inspiration from the crowd list that I built, when he was making his, so, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so here, I kept the hand because it had pretty some abundant growth and some decent hard draw. Uh, but, oh by the way, I should specify, the reason why I did not have Spirit in there was because, uh, I wanted to prohibit his, uh, prism, because, I thought it was very likely he would have one, and if I ask Spirit in and I don't find an untapped land, then I kind of screw myself, where if I out of the prism on turn 3, it could significantly hinder him, and I thought that it was worth going for, so, that's why I didn't do any plays on that turn. It was a gamble, but I thought it would pay off. So here I see a Sun's 8 Familiar in a land, I just take the land. The next turn I can run out the Sun's 8 Familiar. Uh, it is a bit of a risk, it could have a counter spell, so I think instead I impulse him. Uh, now, now that I'm looking back at it, so that, that makes sense. I th yeah, not, yeah, I think... I remember correctly, that's what it was, I was like, I could have been out of familiar, but then I think kind of spell screwed, so why, why not just draw some cards? So here, they impulse, which is fine. Uh, I believe they got like a dispel or something, I, I think I pull it up later in the, in the replay. Uh, play another golden globe. Uh, I want to get the bounce land because that will enable me to, uh, start going off sooner, so. They attack with a Moldifer, I just let that happen. I draw another bounce land, which is not the worst. I cast an up here, man, so I believe they're going to counter spell this here. But it's not that bad for me, all things considered. So now I get to run out another up here, man, so here I get back the uh, prohibit, it looks like. Um, I think my reasoning for any prohibit, prohibit over impulsive research is that I have Flitter already. So Flitter plus our hand is going to draw me a lot of cards, and in fact here they tap out, so what I do is I can just start flickering on, on their end step. Like, I, I'm not playing around in, in, in Roma Horror here, like that's the thing. And it looks like it might break on me here, unfortunately, yeah. So I'm like, it, it breaks. Uh, it can't show you anything, it just, <laughs> the mouse is going around, it's breaking. Uh, unfortunate, but basically what happens here, just to clarify, is they go uh, on their turn, I think they get another uh, missile teachings, and then uh, I bait them. So what I ended up doing was I went to cast Flitter on their end step, they dispelled, and then I prohibited, and then they prohibited, but that tapped them out. And then I believe I drew either a familiar or a utopia scroll. And 
I was able to Albert Hill because I had infinite mana at that point, and what I can do is I can, you know, snap on our Aeomancer to generate infinite mana, and then just get that Ghosty Flitter with our Aeomancer, and then just it'll Flitter our Aeomancer Prophetic Prism. Uh, I believe that's how it went, if I recall correctly. So, apologize for breaking here. I, you can see I'm trying everything to show it, but Matt Hit Online replays are very, very poor, so. You know, I, I, I'll. I, it's not a fun I can do. But I ended up winning that one. Here you can see I pointed out Reaping the Raves in two moments, me, and I just went in three Pyro Blasts and leave it at that. Uh, this hand's great. I can, you know, turn one forest, you can't be a scroll. Uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna believe you can't be a scroll, I'm just gonna turn one forest, and the next turn, uh, I heard you can't be a scroll, and I wanted to. But, um, I didn't want to play it turn one, because if I don't draw an untapped basic land or something, then, uh, I would have to play bounce land, so there's no really reason to do that. But here you can see they have a nut draw, they basically have a perfect nut, perfect draw, um, uh, turn three draw, there's some mold here, but I also have the nut draw, um, uh, you know, you told me to scroll Abundant Rose Bounce Land, so things are going my way. Uh, I pre in here. I am not remote it for just to see if they have counter match it, but they let it happen. And then I believe I just have some impulsive here, and they let that happen. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, if I can untap next turn, I'm going to win, or at least be favored. Because what I can do is I can, you know, you told me to scroll my forest, and then. You know, remote motive for snap motive for remote motive for let it die, remote motive for flicker and just draw a ton of cards. Uh, but they have a new normal horror, and not only that, they have a new normal horror plus ephemerate. The funny thing here is that they didn't have the ephemerate, I still would have won. So what I would have done is I would have tapped the island for blue, uh, play the bounce land on my island, and then, you know, uh, you know, a remote motive for snap it, and then I can use me as well, and maybe go off, but. Uh, they just have, I think they have an ephemerate right here, and then I die, so, yeah. Not a fun I could have done, they had turn 4 in Roma Horror ephemerate, or turn 5 rather, in Roma Horror ephemerate, so, you know, it's, it's not great for me, but it is what it is. That's, that's fine, that's why it's a good net. Um, this one, I, uh, I have the abundant growth, I laid off with that. I think the hand's fairly reasonable, it has some counter match and some hard draw. I want to crack first before I pre in, and I see you can't be scrolled in Prism, both of which I'm fairly happy to see. Um, I run out the Prism here because I don't want to can't be scrolled into a Prohibit, uh, and I would rather they Prohibit my Prism than a you can't be scrolled because scroll is going to start ramping me here. Uh, so, I just don't want to walk into that. So here I small, they just let it happen, I pre in, see a land and a familiar, I went out the familiar, they they uh, prohibit, so they had it, and I was playing around it pretty well, and then I pirate blast that. Uh, so here they play some expedition maps, I'm going to get the Bolsa, play another land, play a uh, London Drill, see an Airmancer, and pass the turn. I mean, you can see, like, I'm just drawing a ton of cards, I've seen, a, a, like, I think, what, nine more cards from them at this point, and... You know, I'm just starting to go off, so the draw here was kind of slow. They hard to have some motive for my night here less. And what's nice is that they're not even able to do Roma Horror, is that they had a prism I would actually prohibit that because it would give them black mana. So here what I do is I have a motive for then I get to snap it. So here I'm just starting to generate mana and cards, which is nice. I have Bundant Growth here, I run out another familiar, and then I have infinite green mana. So, uh I don't actually kill them here, funny enough. Uh, he says, oh crap, you won in games, but, um, what ended up happening was I kind of got into a tight spot where I could keep going, but then I'm opening myself up to eating in Roma Horde. So what I ended up doing instead was I was just like, well, I think I'll just get back, you know, my snap. It's like, here's the thing, if I keep generating mana, I have to literally go all in on an impulsive research. And I don't like that, so I'd rather just say, you know what, I'm gonna hold on to the Arcanum Answer, and then I, I have purple counter spell, so no matter what they can do, I can deal with it. So like here they, Mnemonic Wall, I'll prohibit. So they only have two colored sources, I still have double prohibit. And now I find the Flitter, and now they're dead. So they Pyro Blast, I prohibit, they dispel or do something. Uh, you yeah, know, they Flitter, I'm just gonna say no thank you. I don't even want to give them a, a shot to draw something that I can't deal with. Uh, and now they're dead. So, 
I have a flinter. Um, I'm gonna get infinite um, infinite mana here, and uh, I believe I can stop the replay here. But uh, I was able to uh, basically heal them from there, and uh, yeah, I uh, I'm pretty happy with that overall. So that was the semifinals. Uh, we beat two projects, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the finals. Alright, we are back for the finals. We are up against Hermie Lynx. Uh, spoiler alert, we do not win, but I thought I would show it anyway. So, this is my opener. I have land, bounce land, and then three familiars. I'm on the play, but the problem with this hand is that I, I, I for starters, I, I knew they weren't bottles. And... This hand does nothing against bottles. Like, I know land pass, bounce land pass, granite pass. I'm not going to win if they have an draw. I'm going to die in turn 4 or 5. In order for this hand to work, I mean, the problem is I don't even have a forest. You know what I'm saying? Like, if the island was a forest, you might be able to, to argue it, but it's not. So Utopia Scroll doesn't even do anything. So it's like, what? I need a forest, I need a Utopia Scroll, I need... Uh, prophetic prisms, and some abundant draw, some heart draw. I need too many things. The, the hand is just not doing anything, so I mull it in. This one, unfortunately, just needs a certain land. If I hit, like, a forest or something, or an island, I would actually keep this hand. But because I'm on the plane, it's a, a one land, bounce land hand. It's not, not worth keeping. But, it was very close to being keepable. This one, same thing, one land, bounce land hand, is not eatable. Uh, and then, you know, I mull it into, uh, to four, which is not ideal, but you just kind of have to accept that that can happen sometimes. Uh, so here, it's in a forest, hoping to draw either another land, a bounce land, something. Their draw was nothing spectacular here, I think, you know, had I drawn the right tools, I would have been able to deal with that, but, unfortunately, never quite came. Uh, I could have... So here the replay is lagging a little bit, you can see it's starting to become kind of crappy. Uh, but basically I'm kind of smelling anything that gives them white mana because I want to buy myself some time. Uh, so like here they play a Utopia Scroll, I prohibit that. Uh, but unfortunately I'm just gonna die before I can draw anything relevant. Um, and yeah, I mean you can see the replay is just being really crappy. Um, but yeah, uh... Not in that on that game. Uh, in terms of how I sideboarded, I brought out one Reaping the Rames and one Snap, and I brought in two Moment Feast. Uh, Snap's not great against them, and Reaping the Rames has no taps basically, so yeah. So I'm on the play, this hand's okay. I can go uh, fetch an island and then play a Prism and, you know, take it from there. Likewise, I heard, uh, so yeah, I mean, you can see the replay is also biting out pretty hard, but, uh, basically in the island play a draw, bounce land, they start, uh, buffing their eye pretty quickly. Um, if I recall correctly, I'm just gonna let this play out, but it, it might just lost armor it. They played this, the, uh, Abundant Roof, and I could have prohibited that, which would have cut them off of Essence Armist. The problem is, they have a 13 powered guy in play, and without that, it's 11 powered. But, the problem is, like, if I counter spell that, then I'm just putting myself off of thoughts. And if they have any other enchantment, I die. So it's like, do I really want to gamble with that? I, I don't think I do. Uh, but basically, that even black mana so that they could essence harvest me. Um, here, what I do is, I couldn't have to prohibit, but. Um, that would have resulted in me not being able to ask impulsive, which I don't think is correct. And then it kind of breaks on me at the end, but basically what happens is they attack, I flash that moment of peace, and then they ask the essence harvest, and I die. Um, so, overall, you know, I, I, I mean, they drew the essence harvest on their top, you know, 12 cards, basically. Uh, which, you know, it, it happens, right? Sometimes they find what they need. Um... This is not a ton I can really have done about that. And then... Game 1, I just got a little unlucky, right? I didn't, I didn't draw very well, and... 
I'm rolling into four. Uh, but honestly, I'm not really upset with my results. Like, I think and while the replays didn't always work, but in the ones that did work, and I showed you some of my thought process, I think I did everything reasonably well for the most part. A lot of my losses were, you know, my opponent had, you know, triple Delver, or I molded a four, uh, or I was in a terrible matchup like land destruction. Those were my three losses. Everything else I beat. So, I think, you know, I played that pretty well, short in, you know, in my favor, but, uh, I think every time I had a, a matchup where I could have won, I won. And every time I was in a, a, a matchup where, you know, things didn't go my way, I lost. But, I mean, that's life, right? So, uh, overall, I think I, I did very well in this tournament. I think this was a great meta imp hall. Not only did it throw off people, they had no idea what I was on. Um, but it could also just come up on turn 5 or turn 6. So, you were actually were able to have a lot. So, it was able to be linear while also being in and strong. And being able to ride people out. So, it did a little bit of everything, and I liked that. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, that was the, the gameplay. Apologize for the replays, but it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the wrap-up. Alright, so we're back for the wrap-up. Uh, so yeah, set in place in Public Champs. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I think moving forward, if you want to play this net, I would definitely practice with it. Um, I also think you could hunt a really common sport herpes. Um, it's pretty because in testing, I found that affinity could be kind of rough. Uh, Bottles was also a little tricky, but I was able to beat it more than Affinity, because, you know, they didn't have a lot of reach, you know, they do not have Yalvana Blast for my familiars or anything. Um, they're, they're not as interactive, and so you're able to kind of fault lot them out, and as long as they don't draw, like, their fling or anything, or Essence Harvest or whatever, uh, which you still have answers to. Um... You can typically be in okay shape, so I found that in testing it was more beatable than Affinity, but it looks like in the current meta game, people are shying away from uh, from Affinity and moving more towards Bottles, so I would look into playing her view. you. Um, the problem is a lot of enchantment hate also hurts you, so like Serene Heart or uh, Leave No Trace both affect you in a negative fashion. Uh, but what ni what's nice about her view is that if they, you know, have, say, one or two bottles in play, you can play Herfew, bounce one of them, and then you're hey, man, for Herfew in the other one, and then you have infinite Herfew effects, because you can play Herfew, and return out Hamancer, and then replay it, hey, hey, man, for it back Herfew, play Herfew, and just do that forever, and so it basically means they're never going to have a creature that can play, uh, which is nice. So, I do think that's worth look looking into, I think this is probably the best option we have outside of racing, or fault lighting. So, I heard say maybe kind of like a flicker, uh, reaping the graves, a uh, snap, and a prohibit, and one in like moments, these moments, these curfew, curfew. Uh, something like that might be in order. Uh, but yeah, uh, outside of that, I think the net's pretty, pretty well positioned. Uh, it is, uh, pretty powerful overall, I would say. Uh, it's able to Hammer Hill, I think, as early as turn 4, but that's like the nut draw. But it can definitely Hammer Hill turn 5 and 6, which I, I like. Uh, it's able to ride people out, you know, reaping the rave for him and stuff like that. Side more get and rouse, and uh, red blast, side of blast, etc. Um, it, it does it all, and, and I, I think, you know, while it might not be, you know, <laughs> I mean, consistency might be a little iffy, but. Um, I think for the most part it's a pretty reasonable archetype. Um, I was able to get set in, in champs with it, so there's something going for it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it plays a, a lot like Heart Clan Ironworks, where you have all these different moving pieces, like this is a hammer piece, this is a hammer piece, 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 piece, like, so many things, I mean, this is even a hammer piece, you know, like, there's just so many different ways to just go infinite. Um, one card that you can also try out that I have had some success with in the past is, uh, Manamorphos. Um, I was testing this with the, uh, with, uh, the Method Man. Uh, I also was considering it with, uh, testing in, against he who is in the water, but we decided to answer it. But basically, this can also be a hammer piece because you have two familiar from play and two are hammer from play. 
and a flint area and a mana morphos. Um, basically what happens is this costs one mana, and this generates two mana, but it also costs one mana, so what you do is you say, I'm going to play mana morphos generating one green and one blue, and then you say, okay, Use that one blue to flip your uh, mantras, it map, metamorphos, and flitter, and then you're up the card, and then you can play metamorphos off the green mana, and now you map up to blue green, and you just keep doing that over and over, and then you can draw your entire library, and eventually, you know, find your copious rolls and snaps and stuff like that, so to, uh, to uh, actually kill them, but uh, that's kind of a cool way to go infinite. I mean, there's just so many ways, it's like, you know, create a loop with this archetype, it's, it's just really, really fun. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of a wrap-up on the deck, uh, you know, I would not change a thing with this tournament, I think I did everything correct. Sure, I got a little lucky here and there, but that's part of magic, and I had a blast. I mean, the deck's really, really fun, and I mean, there's nothing else like this in Popper, so being able to just kind of do my own thing and get rewarded was an awesome feeling. Uh, so, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the Popper Meta game as a whole. Uh, just because I think, like, you know, this is a good note to end on. Um, currently, for Popper, uh, I would argue that the format is shifting towards being more linear. Uh, for example, that's like Affinity, Bottles, Stop Me, Elves, Burn. Those are all very, you know, viable archetypes in Popper, and they're all linear. What I mean by that, when I say linear, is they're aggressive, they're not super interactive, and they're just trying to heal the opponent as quickly as possible. And Tron, in my opinion, is a linear deck. Now, it's not necessarily trying to heal in turn 4 or 5, but it's trying to assemble Tron by that time, and get a lot down line, and, and you know, fought the opponent just enough, so then it eventually get, get split around and heal in and heal the opponent. Tron's a pretty linear deck, and it's one of the best decks in the format. And if you look at the proper meta game currently, a lot of people have said, you know, we want Tron to get banned. Now, I've also seen the argument of banning stuff out of Tron. I don't think that's a good idea. You should not be banning Moldifers and stuff like that, or Prisms, or Flickers, or whatever. I think just ban Tron and move on. At that point, Flicker becomes a lot more fair. Because in order to abuse it, you have to be kind of all in, like this list is, and I think that would be fine. I mean, if people have to be all in on, on your simulator, then, you know, so be it. If you have to play familiar, so generate mana, that's fine, people can kill them. It's actually feasible to interact with this, whereas, uh, Tron is pretty difficult to interact with in terms of its mana base. Um... But I also think the reason why Tron is so popular is systemic to Popper. I don't think banning Tron would actually change anything, because the fact of the matter is, you're not going to really improve the format that much by banning Tron. I think, I mean, maybe I'm incorrect on this, but my whole issue with Popper is that if you ban Tron, the linear decks are still the best thing to be doing. Like, all the linear decks I've named are still going to be playable. In fact, they might even get better because now they don't have to worry about Tron anymore. And now that it, that it hits sideboard, hits other matchups. It's like, it's, just because you ban Tron doesn't mean, you know, the linear deck stop being good. And like, sure, you know, you might say, oh, but Mono Black Control and a mat, and, you know, that's why it's eating a mat. But the problem is, we're not going to be able to deal with all of the linear decks. You're not going to be able to consistently meet Bottles and Affinity and Elves and Burn, etc. Like, Mono Black Control, right? You might say, oh, if that one's mat, then Bottles has an, a natural predator. Well, sure, but Mono Black Control is never ever going to be Burn, it's never going to be Affinity, right? So already out the bat, two of the linear decks of the format just meet you. Not to mention you can still lose to some of the other linear decks, like, I've beaten Mono Black Control while on Bottles, you know, I've beaten Mono Black Control while on Burn, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you still lose anyways, which is kind of a feel bad. Um... And so then the, the only thing that's really left is like Morris Mana and the Mystic Sanctuary decks. And I think the fair Mystic Sanctuary decks with the Prime and whatnot, they'll be okay, but once again, you're still going to lose to some of the linear decks. And the, the Mana decks are also still going to lose to some of the linear decks. Like, Morris is not particularly favored against Elves, especially if they land like a Spider Silk Armor. 
you know, more or less not particularly ready to eat spot eels because they don't have a very efficient way to interact with them. You had to eat just something it, like a lot of these linear nets, there is going to be some of the more fair nets and Fraud, I think, is a symptom of that, where people still like to draw cards and do things like that. Whereas a lot of the linear nets are not really trying to draw cards and, and ride people out. They're just trying to heal people quickly. And if you like to draw cards and do stuff like that, it's difficult to, to do anything other than Fraud, because Fraud has access to Stone Horn, and Fairy, and Moments Beast, which are universal. They deal with all of the linear nets, right? And there's nothing else like that that comes close to it. Um, uh, you know, like, Model Black Control, it's removal-based, and Black Removal is in a certain matchup, and it's terrible in others, you know? Blue Red Elmer, Blue Red Fairy, rather, is red removal-based, and in certain matchups, that's terrible, like, against Bottles, your removal does nothing. And against things like Stompy, or, you know... Affinity, sometimes that's also a problem, like Lightning Bolt is now actually bad against them. Uh, well, yes, it's bad against Affinity. Against Sopi, it might be okay in certain spots, but they have access to things like River Mower, which makes you run removal of you, and they can heal you with that. And so, you can kind of see that a lot of these fair linear nets are just they're going to have an, uh, uh, or not, not the, sorry, not the fair linear not the fair linear nets, just the, the more fair interactive nets, they're going to have a bad matchup against some of the linear nets in the format. And because of that, it's like, well, do you, do you really want to run it bad? Do you think that's really going to improve the format? You know, like, I feel like this has been a long time coming. In the sense that I think ever since we got Burning Free Emissary and All Your Molas and Enroma Horror, that's sort of been the start of the paradigm shift in Popper where the master sets are just sort of pushing Popper in a more aggressive fashion and they're raising the barrier to entry. I mean, we got Ephemerate, Astral Life, Foil, Parrot and Ray, All Your Molas, you know, Fire Ice, Enroma Horror, Burning Free Emissary, Savage Swipe, Winding Way, Lean the Stampede, Seeker of the Way. You know, I, I can list a, a ton of cards that are now format all stars. And they, they all came from master sets. And I think, you know, that's meant most good and bad, where it's like, it's good if we get new cards, but it's bad because now it raises the barrier to entry. And, you know, most cards that we used to, that used to see player is now you know, not, not viable anymore. I mean, you know, teams is no longer seen play, Blue Black Flitter is not really good, I mean, Blue Black Alchemy, you know, etc, cetera, etc, cetera. so many things out there is not viable anymore, and I think, you know, with, with how the format is, it's just, it's, it's trending towards a more linear, uh, oriented direction, and, I'm not saying that's bad or good. I'm not trying to argue for it one way or, or another. But that's just what I've noticed. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. But uh, for now, I'll, I'll still be playing Popper. I'm probably not going to be playing as much because I have, uh, you know, IRL things that are starting up now and there are other things I have to be doing. But uh, I'll still be playing Popper. Uh, I have a couple things in the works. Uh, so, when those get going, I'll, I'll post some videos on them, but, uh, for now, you know, just in a heap having fun with Popper, heap ruin, messing around, uh, trying to have a new time. I know there are some more magic online Popper tournaments coming up. Uh, I know Season 1 for the 2020 Magic Online Championship is currently in action, so, uh, I'm playing for that. And hoping to do well. Uh, obviously, there's three seasons this year, which is nice, so, if you do bad in one, it's okay, hey, you still have other ones you can do better in, so, uh, I'm looking forward to that, and, uh, yeah, that's really about it, that's sort of, uh, where I'm at, it's, it's, uh, status update, uh, I know this has been a bit of a longer series, but I thought I would, uh, you know, just thought about this type of stuff while I can, and, uh, yeah, that's about it, thank you all for, uh, for watching, uh, I know this was not, you know, the best quality in terms of replays, but I did the best I could, 
I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, I hope you thought that it was cool, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.